Mr. Eisenhower, please proceed. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, my, my approach over the last five months has been to travel the state. And I've been holding listening sessions all over the state. And I want to stand up. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to just share some of the snapshots from, from people I've talked to. I bought some corn from a woman at a roadside stand who started crying when she told me about her son coming back from Iraq after a second tour and she doesn't know him anymore. I was at the dentist the other day uh, and, the, and the person cleaning my teeth, I thought, uh, what do you care about in the election? You know how that goes at the dentist. You know, what do you care about? And she said, you know, she said she's got a four-month-old son and she's worried about the Iraq war because we may be there for a long, long time if we listen to the rhetoric in Washington. And she said, you know, the saddest day of the year for her is when they have the free clinic and the people come in for dental care and she has to pull the teeth from 10 and 12 year olds because they have never ever been to a dentist. Or I talked to the, the business owner, the small business owner on the western suburbs who told me that he pays his workers fairly and they all have health care except he just got word that the US government cut out his contract and outsourced the jobs to China. Or I talked to the workers who haven't had a pay raise in 20 years because of the cost of health care going up and up and up. And the woman who was holding, cradling a baby in her arms, and I told her about my website, www.mostimportantdecade.com, a takeoff on Jim Hansen, the lead environmental scientist, who says, we've got less than 10 years, and the decisions we make in the next 10 years will determine the quality of life for all future generations. And she says, you're right. She held that child uh, even, even more, more closely. I've been talking to people at community action agencies around the state. They've said they've never had so many people coming in, working full time without hope, without health care, without being able to pay for their heating bills, without being able to pay for the gasoline in their car. And then we add to that what we've seen in the state of Minnesota related to global warming, which is the local flooding, the ruining of people's lives, and the widespread drought in this state. And we may not want to say it, but we all know, lingering in the back of our minds, this is global warming. We better do something. And then what happens? The bridge falls down. And as Amy Klobuchar said, bridges in the United States shouldn't fall down. It's like a powerful symbol of our country coming apart from within because of the skewed priorities. Now, I've got many, many more stories I could tell you, but what ties all of those stories together for me is this. They all connect to the fact that in this country right now, we have dysfunctional systems and horrible priorities and very bad policies that are impacting us in very, very bad ways. And what I want to say to you with absolute conviction is that those policies and priorities can be changed and we have the power to change them. We can have a single-payer health care system in this country. Other countries in the world do it. But to get there, we have to fight the pharmaceutical industries, the HMOs, and the health insurance companies. If we talk about universal health care and don't talk about that, then we're just offering you smoke and mirrors. There's nothing in our economic logic or economic system that says all wealth and most income gains have to go to the richest one to five percent. Those are the rules set in Washington, the tax policies. We can cut the Bush tax breaks for the richest one percent and we can have all students attending public universities do so for free. We, we can cut the U.S. military budget by 10% and have a universal preschool program for three to five year olds. And we can confront global warming. The greatest challenge to this country and the world is global warming. We have to cut carbon emissions by 90% by 2030. By 2030. Now we can do that but it's going to take incredible leadership and vision and a determination from all of us to make that transition. Now, I want to just say a couple of things about the Iraq War. 
1992, Dick Cheney and Paul Wolfowitz wrote a document called the Defense Policy Review. They said the Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore. There's nobody to stop the United States. We have to unleash our military around the world to make sure that no country or group of countries can ever challenge U.S. power again. Bill Clinton was elected. These people went off and did their think tanks. And in September 2000, they issued a report called Rebuilding America's Defenses. And they said, they laid out America's grand strategy. They said, we can achieve permanent global domination. All we have to do is dramatically increase military spending, uh, have regime change in Iraq, put permanent military bases in the Middle East, take, uh, re replace the Iraqi government, put, uh, uh, develop a new generation of usable nukes, militarize space, and pull out of international agreements that limit our power. Wow. Talk about a disaster. The reason I bring that up is because all of our hopes hinge on getting out of Iraq. All of our hopes hinge on changing the foreign policy of this country in a way that moves from militarism to actually responding to pressing needs. But if you look at Iraq through what I just said, the people who brought us this war, they see it as a great success. Oil prices have gone through the roof. Military spending has gone through the roof. And now they're targeting Iran. And we have to stop it. Let me close by saying this. This is what we need. This is how we defeat Norm Coleman. We have to have honesty in this country about where we are. And I think the people are longing for some honesty. We have to have a powerful vision, a compelling vision for this nation and this state and how we can move forward and have a common sense agenda to meet the common needs of people. And we have to have practical alternatives of how we get there. And then we need to issue a personal call to each of us to take the actions that we need to take to transform this country. Thank you.